The site is looking pretty good, but there is one last thing that I'd like to cover, and this is responsive design, because this is what Bootstrap is all about. We can't be happy with the results so far, but also we're going to see what happens as soon as we shrink the size of the screen. And we see that as soon as we reduce the size of the screen, we have less space. Everything becomes cramped and cluttered. And we have that big image, which isn't responsive, which is using up all the space on the site. And when we go even smaller, it's completely cut off. So it's not ideal for a mobile view, for a mobile user experience. And by checking out below, so the body section, we can see that the thumbnails have become big boxes. So we're not sure what it is, and that would certainly leave the user quite confused. Same for the photo gallery, that doesn't look very pretty. And that's because the mobile first approach is the default setting, so now all the images are stacked on each other. In regards to the footer, it's not too disappointing, so there's not going to be much work to do for the footer. So in this lecture, we're going to go on with the customization. We're going to focus only on the small devices. So let's start with the header and see how we can resolve this problem that we have with this big image. And already, there is a quick fix that we can use by using a built-in CSS from Bootstrap, and this one is image responsive. But ultimately, I think that the best approach would be to hide this image on smaller devices. Before going any further, we're going to read more about responsive utilities that you can find under CSS on the CSS page under Responsive Utilities. And their purpose is that they are tied to media queries and they are designed to show or hide elements depending on the size of the screen. And using any of these classes will allow to control the visibility of an element depending on the size of the screen. And we can target one or several media queries. Extra small, small devices, medium or large devices. We're going to look at two examples. So first, hidden excess and hidden SM for small. Because we're going to want to use these two in our design. So hidden excess will allow to hide an element on an extra small device. And the same element will be visible on the small device, medium and large device. As for hidden SM for small, for the tablet view, for example, it's going to be visible on an extra small device that's going to be hidden on a small device, and that's going to be back to visible on medium and large devices. So if you understand what we're going to do, we're going to use those two classes in order to hide the picture from the extra small and small devices, and we're going to keep the picture visible on the medium and large devices. So back to our code, we're going to go right after image responsive hidden iPhone XS in the order. Then we're going to write hidden dash SM for the tablet view. We're going to save and reload the page to see what happens as soon as we reduce the size of the screen. And here we go. So now on the tablet view, we no longer see the picture. And same when we reduce as small as an iPhone size, for example. We're going to continue to upgrade on the customizations for the smaller devices by taking care now of the body section. First, for the product information. So we're going to check out again when we reduce the size of the screen. We have two massive boxes that are using up a lot of space on the screen, so it's not really user-friendly, and I don't think that this is pleasant for a mobile user experience. Same for the photo gallery, so now the images are stacked on each other, so there is lots of upgrade that we can do. We're going to check this out later. Let's take care of the product information section first. Following the example of the image inside the header section, we're going to change, we're going to control the visibility of the image placeholder inside the thumbnail. So for each image, we're going to add a class in order to make them invisible on smaller devices. And now back to our browser, we're going to reload the page. 
and scroll up again and here it is so now we have nice thumbnails that are nicely displayed they certainly use less space and it's easier on the eye one last change that we would like to do this is for the buttons so what we would like to do is to make them use the full width of the parent div now that we've removed the pictures from the mobile view we could increase this call to action button and going back to the CSS page on the Bootstrap site, we're going to find a section for the block level button. And using this class btn block will allow the buttons to use the full width of the parent div. So after copying this one, we're going to go back to our code and add it to our button, each of them. Let's save and go back to the browser to see how this looks. And here it is. So now the button is using the full width of the parent div, which is the thumbnail. And even when we shrink the size of the screen, we have this button, which is very apparent. Moving along now, we're going to take care of the photo gallery, and we're going to start by making all these images responsive. So here again, we're going to use the class of image responsive on each image element. Also, what I have in mind is to keep the exact same layout on a smaller device by keeping two rows with two images on each row. And for that, we're going to use the grid system. So we're going to go right now to the code in order to understand the point here. And we can read that we already have a class for the desktop view allowing the two images to be next to each other on the first row. We would like to do the same thing for the extra small devices also, by copying the same class, but instead of having MD, we're going to have XS, which is going to apply to the extra small device. And the result is that this is going to override the default setting, which is the mobile-first approach, when the divs are stacked on each other on a smaller device. So here we can see on the tablet view, so the layout remains with two rows and two images next to each other. And when we go even smaller, we still have the same layout, so that's pretty nice. We have a nice gallery with two rows and two images on each line. We're going to continue to scroll down to check out the footer now. Bootstrap 3 is using the mobile-first approach, so now we have three divs stacked on each other by default. This layout is pretty nice to me. We don't need to change anything, although I'd like to change maybe the presentation of the company address because comparing to the rest of the page we can see that we have a little bit of padding of margin inside the other element except for the company address so we're going to see how we can change that and in order to make the change only for the small device we're going to need to use the media query And in this example, what we want to do is targeting the well. So for that, we're going to set the background to none in order to change it. One thing we're going to do before going any further, so we're going to make sure that we are targeting the right element or the right class. So for that, we're going to use the inspector tool. And by locating the right element, so in the inspector tool, we can find, so first, the address class. And here is our class well. And there we can see that the default setting, so we have different colors for the background. There is a light gray and we also have like something like a gradient. So we're going to override that by setting our custom style, which will become active only when we reduce the size of the screen. And this breakpoint is 468 pixels and smaller. So we're going to go check this out in the browser by reducing the size of the screen and then we're going to scroll down just to check this out much closer. Here it is. We have our company address box. Although it doesn't look like this is working, so we're going to check our code again. 
And back to our code, we can see that we forgot a space between AND and the first bracket. So you must always leave a space between AND and the bracket where you have the max or minimum width, whatever. There's always a space. So we're going to save again. We're going to go back to the page, to the browser, and reload the page again. And let's see what happens when we shrink the size of the screen. So here it is. We have everything OK. And we're going to go smaller until we reach the breaking point of an extra small device. And here it is. So now it's white. So it blends better with the rest of the elements on the page when we are on the mobile view. So you see that with media queries, we can target elements with certain classes for specific screen size only. Another note about being specific, so you could use the same class well on other elements, provided that you were to work on a bigger project with more lines of code. A class can be used several times, so there is a high chance that you could use the same class on other elements on your web page. Hence, the importance to be specific. So for that, what we're going to do is target the div with a class of well, inside another div with a class of footer. And to finish this lecture, I'd like to speak about the navbar, which is on the top. It is designed to change into a collapsible menu when we reach a smaller device view. So we're going to see again. So here we have the navbar. We're going to shrink the size of the screen. And as soon as the screen becomes smaller, then we have a nice collapsible menu. And we can make the menu collapse by clicking on the button in the corner. Here it is. So now we are in the gallery. We're going to make the menu slide up. And we're going to check out the drop-down menu. Here we go. We're going to go back home and slide up again. 